Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to solve this equation. Now, I'm not going to tell you what type of equation this is right now because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to be able to solve this thing all on your own. And if you can figure this out, if you can find the solutions to this equation, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then I'm going to tell you what type of equation this is and exactly how to solve it. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's just start with the first question here. What type of equation is this? Because we have all sorts of equation equations in algebra, right? So let's just name some here. You have linear equations. We have um, exponential equations, logarithmic equations, radical equations, rational equations, systems of equations. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, there's matrix equations. Uh, there are, uh, there's on and on and on, right? But the ones that we're concerned about is quadratic equation. This is quadratic equation. So all these type of equations, okay, you basically have to take a different approach. Then, you know, the, in other words, if you if you went to someone and say, hey, can you help me learn how to solve equations in algebra? They're going to say, sure, no problem. What type of equations? Logarithmic equations, exponential equations, rational equations, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're dealing with here specifically is a quadratic equation because when we take this x plus 1 and square it, we're going to end up with an x squared term, okay? Now, quadratic equations are really kind of part of a uh, subtopic of solving polynomial equations in algebra, all right? So you can have third degree, fourth degree polynomials. You can have first degree polynomials, which we classify as linear equations. So this is a, it's a big, you know, all these fancy names that you encounter in algebra and mathematics, you need to understand, you know, um, the terminology, okay? So it's really important. But here... We are dealing with a second degree polynomial equation, which we would classify as a quadratic equation. So if you knew that, that's fantastic. But let's go and see the solutions uh, to this quadratic equation. And here it goes. X is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2i. Okay. Now, if you don't know what this i is, well, we're, what we're dealing with here is imaginary numbers or imaginary uh, solutions or complex solutions, however you want to look at it. But this is the answer. Now, if you got this right without the aid of a calculator or anything like that, well, let's give you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to solve a quadratic equation with complex solutions. They would be really, really impressed with that. They might even take you out to lunch or dinner. You just never know, right? Okay, uh, before I get into the actual solution here, let's just fast, fast, uh, uh, very quickly review some basic concepts about quadratic equations. Okay, so we know that they're polynomial uh, to the second, a second degree polynomial. Okay, so I just kind of talked about that in the beginning, but these are things that you need to be aware of before you go into any problem. Okay, when you're looking at a quadratic equation, the first is there are always two solutions to a quadratic equation. Always, 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 no matter what. Now, these solutions can either be real number solutions or imaginary complex number solutions, okay, like in this particular case right here. But there will always be two solutions. Now, how do you solve, uh, what techniques do we use to solve quadratic equations? Well, there's, it all depends on the format of the problem, okay? So sometimes you can take the square root of the both sides of the equation. Oftentimes we want to factor if we can. So we can take the square root of both sides of the equation if we can. We can, uh, we can factor. And we want to factor if we can factor. And if we can't do that, then you can always use the good old-fashioned quadratic formula that will solve any quadratic equation scenario. And there's another cool little technique called completing the square. Uh, which is kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula. But basically, 
These are our practical methods of solving quadratic equations. You do need to know completing the square, and there's even additional um, techniques to, uh, to solve polynomial equations, quadratic equations. But these right here, these general concepts, you should know this uh, going into this problem. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, oh my goodness, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're giving me way too much information. Just teach me how to solve the problem. Listen, what I'm trying to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is not only just teach you how to solve the problem, but teach you how to see the big picture, okay? Math is more than just, you know, being like a little machine and be like, okay, do these steps, and then here's the answer. Your teacher wants to know more. Um, I want you to, uh, uh, they want to know that you understand the kind of interrelated concepts going on, and you're going to see, you know, uh, problems that will say, hey, tell, you know, compare and contrast three different ways to solve a quadratic equation. That would be a question I would give like on a final exam. Compare and contrast the three different three different ways to compare a quadratic equation. You might say, oh, okay, this technique, this technique, this technique. That really shows mastery of that topic. Okay, so let's get into the actual situation right now. Here is the problem. Eight is equal to negative two times x plus one squared. So here's the deal for me. The first thing is when I'm solving an equation and the variables on the right-hand side, let's say like if I had 2 equals 2, uh, 10 is equal to 2x, if I had this equation, I'd like to, you know, we're kind of used to having the variable on the left-hand side when you solve equations. So one thing I would like to do, and it's not necessary, but I think it's a good practice, is put all your variable terms on the left. In other words, you're going to just reverse this. So like in this case, I would write 2x is equal to 10. There's nothing wrong with doing that, okay? So in this case, I'm like, eh, you know, I'm a, uh, I use my right hand to write. So some of you might be, you know, may not like to work with the variable on the right-hand side. So I'm simply going to just write it over on the left-hand side, just as I did right here. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So that's my first step. Okay, so my brain's like, okay, I'm used to having a variable on the left. Now we can go ahead and uh, take a look at the next step. Okay, so the next thing we want to do in this particular problem, this x plus 1 squared, we have an expression squared, right? Something squared is equal to a number. That's an outstanding scenario, especially we have our variable in here, to take the square root of both sides. Now, how would you know that? Well, just the, this just comes with experience and, you know, obviously learning the different uh, strategies to solve quadratic equations, okay? So what you don't want to do is start expanding this, take x plus 1, multiply it by itself, then distribute it into negative 2, and then set this thing equal to 0. You're basically taking the long road, right? So here is the start. Here is the end of the problem. If you did all that work, you're kind of doing this, boop, 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 to get to the answer. You'll get to the answer. But what we're looking uh, for is the most direct, efficient path, okay? So that's why it's important to know all these different strategies. So here, I'm like, ooh, I got this thing squared. I can take the square root of both sides, but what I need to do first is isolate this part of the equation. So the way I'm going to do that is divide both sides of the equation by this negative 2, all right? So when I do that, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is, of course, positive 1. 8 divided by negative 2 will give me negative 4. Okay, so here now I am like, okay, awesome. X plus 1 squared is equal to negative 4. Now I can take the square root of both sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, and when I do that, the square root of X plus 1 squared, uh, anytime you have an expression squared and you take the square root of it, it's just going to be the in this part right here, the base of this power. So it's X plus 1. Okay, so hopefully... All of you out there say, oh, I understand that. So the square root, again, of x plus 1 squared is x plus 1. Now, this is where it becomes interesting. We have to take the square root of both sides. We end up with the square root of negative 4. Now, if you go into your calculator, if you have a basic calculator, uh, you're going to get some sort of error on your calculator if you try to take the square root of negative 4. Your calculator is going to be upset at you. You'll be like, hey, I don't understand what that means, but if you have a fancy graphing calculator or scientific calculator, it very well could show you 2i. Okay, now we are taking the root of this, so this is going to be plus and minus. This part is important as well. Let's talk a little bit more about why this is plus or minus 2i, because that is really kind of the um, really key point in this problem. All right, so when we take the square root of negative 4, you want to be thinking, 
in terms of this. Well, I can write that as the square root of positive 4 times negative 1, right? Because positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, so these are the same. Okay, just writing this as two factors of this number right here. Now, in, um, in algebra, you can separate one big radical, one big square root like this. I can separate these two factors into their own little square roots. So this would be the square root of positive 4 times the square root of negative 1. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense to you. I kind of write that right there. Okay, so now at this point, I'm like, oh, okay, I know how to take the square root of positive 4. That's plus and minus 2, right? Because positive 2 times positive 2 is a positive 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 is also positive 4. So when you're dealing with solving um, uh, for solutions, like in quadratic equations, etc., you don't want to deal with the principal square root, which is the positive. You do want to use both the positive and negative. So that's positive negative 2. All right, so remember, uh, the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, that is uh, equal to uh, the square root of 4 times negative 1, which is equal to the square root of negative 4. That's what we had. But now we have this square root of negative 1, and by definition, this is what we call an imaginary number. So I, the imaginary part of a complex number, is by definition the square root of negative 1. So we're going to uh, have that right here. Okay, now if you don't understand imaginary numbers or complex numbers, it's important that you do because uh, there's going to be a lots of problems when you're solving quadratic equations that will have imaginary roots or complex roots. Okay, so now we have um, x plus 1 is equal to positive negative 2i. So x plus 1 is equal to positive negative 2i. Remember, we um, are looking for two solutions. So to solve for x, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And now I have this as my answer. Now you might be saying, hey, you told me there was two uh, solutions. Well, I, you know, I didn't lie to you. There are two solutions. Let's take a look at the first one. The first one would be negative 1 plus 2i. And the second one, we could use a little uh, notation like this, x sub 1. And the second solution would be negative 1 minus 2i. So this minus here and this plus here. We're like, you know, it's the same thing. Let's just put plus or minus. So that's why we write our answers in this format here. Okay, so again, you know, when it comes to quadratic equations, you want to just know, you know, here's my attitude towards it. If you're going to learn math, let's do it the right way so there's no frustration. People get frustrated when they're just, you know, they're like you know, uh, trying to take shortcuts, okay? You know, think about it. If you're trying to go to a particular destination, right, and you put into your Google Maps or you put into your, you know, your GPS, whatever the case is, and you know, that's going to give you the most direct path there, okay? You're not going to say, hey, give me all the shortcuts. Well, I guess you can use like an app like Waze. It does get, <laughs> kind of give you shortcuts. But in mathematics, you know, you, you, there's no shortcuts in terms of learning, okay? There are some things that are kind of like little tricks and, you know, hacks, and those are important to know. But in terms of the concepts and the big picture, there is no shortcuts. You just got to commit to learning it, okay? If you're committed... Don't worry about whether you're smart enough because you're definitely smart enough. It's all about are you committed enough, okay? Math is a game of commitment or a skill or a subject of commitment, just like anything else, okay? And it does take time. So if you need help with this level of math, I would suggest checking out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with all this stuff as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.